This conference will now be recorded. So we will talk about uh, the plans for today. What we are going to discuss. And right, uh, all those things. So we are starting with a uh, advanced Kubernetes advanced program today. And this is going to be a two weeks training. The training will take two weeks and after the training you will have a project right usual so the project would take a one week to complete and that is how our schedule is going to be so um, today we will talk about what is kubernetes and why do we need it And before that, you know, we will have an overview about what is a production infrastructure. Say production environment. You might already have an idea by now what is a production environment, but you know, I will give an overview. And then uh, a production environment with a Docker, how you will manage it using Kubernetes and what are the problems the environment is facing and how kubernetes can solve those problems we will have a uh, you know overview and how kubernetes works and then then we will you know once we learn kubernetes uh, basics how it works uh, some some theoretical session after that we are going to talk about um, how to create a Kubernetes cluster. And we will also talk a little bit about Kubernetes networking. How the networking happens inside Kubernetes, the internal communication right, uh, that happens through networking. So uh, how exactly the networking works inside Kubernetes environment. So these are the things we are going to discuss today. So first of all, uh, I will give you an overview about a production environment, right? A production environment inside a company. So let us let us start. So what is a production environment? A production environment is nothing but you can say it is a set of machines running your company software and serving your customers right that's what mean by a production environment so every software after your company has developed it you want this software to run inside a set of machines and your customers will be using that software right so if you think about a Flipkart or any retail firm, so this is how it will look like. You know, they will have a number of softwares and services, right? There will be shopping cart, there will be prime customers. So like that, there are different different software that the company have developed. And assume the software is tested and you know all software functions are looking good. And you know you can say the software is now ready to go to your customer or to your production environment. So what you will do is you will create a number of machines inside production environment, right? There can be a good number of machines you expect in production environment. Companies like Amazon, you know, they may have uh, lakhs of machines, or even startups would have hundred or five hundred number of machines because. Uh, you know uh, the traffic is lot and in order to process all the traffic you might want uh, multiple machines to use right so assume this situation shopping cart this is the shopping cart software it will run on this particular machine then you have the prime customer software which will run on a different machine like that there are different different software for order management then for customer details then for product catalog then then what else you know then for uh, google pay payment so like that there are different different services the retailer had developed and all these services will be initially developed by the developer and after that the services will be tested 
and verify to make sure that everything looks good and if everything looks good you would run this software in your production environment production environment is a set of machines assume linux machines and you will run the software inside those machines maybe you know it could be your wordpress software or any software right uh, whatever the softwares are you would be running them inside those machines so you will run them inside different different machines the software will be run and that is how it will look like and uh, you know some machines can actually run multiple software it is absolutely fine and uh, some machines uh, probably run only one software so it is up to you to decide or up to the lord on the machines you will make the decision based on that so you know there are different different factors that will force you to make some decision on which software will run on which machine and sometimes on the same machine uh, same software will run on multiple machines because uh, for example the front end software to which the browser connects to uh, lots of people are browsing your website and one machine may not be sufficient so in that case you will run the same software in multiple machines so assume you have two machines and in both the machines you will run the same software so that is also absolutely fine so this environment where your customer connects to this is called a production environment and every company who has a software product they have a production environment and they want to run their software in production environment and assume this is the front end machine so the customer assume this is a website web application like flipkart.com and then some uh, some customer some person who want to browse for the flipkart.com website his browser will first connect to this machine the machine that is running the front end software and this machine will respond to the browser with the web page and when the browser try to create a shopping cart then a request would be sent to the shopping cart software which is running on a different machines and sometimes the machines want to communicate each other right it is uh, quite possible right uh, this uh, back end this uh, shopping cart software want to connect to the prime customer software uh, to check what are the offer available for prime customer so this internal communication also need to happen and nowadays the people develop very small small services for that purpose right uh, which is called microservices a wordpress is not a microservice but a microservice is something that has only few programs right it will be lightweight and it can be put inside any machines and they can communicate each other with the other machine so it is independent of other software it can run independently in different different machines like this prime customer is a microservice that run independently and whenever it want to connect to the shopping cart or product catalog it will communicate over a network right uh, some network communication will happen between the prime customer software and the product catalog software so this way nowadays the companies develop microservices more than one single complex software that will make things easy so assume the flipkart company has different different microservices the shopping cart the order management the customer uh, details management google pay payments front end back end so like that there are different different software components and all the software components are running across different different machines in their production environment all right so so what are the challenges do you ex what challenges do you expect in in this case so i will explain there are some problems that can occur in production environment first of all all these are electronic devices right they are all 
machines like your laptops they can fail right they are created with cpu memory and ram right and this ram you know, these are all electronic devices any of them can fail at any time right you know that so you cannot be sure that you know all the machines will run forever no any machines can fail at any time so if you know assume a machine failed the machine was running the shopping cart software and that machine had failed and all your customer who was working on your website uh, they were creating a shopping cart they will start noticing some problem with the shopping cart software and assume the front end software this is the front end software you know uh, the front end software is where the browser will first connect to so uh, anyone who browse your website they try to connect to the front end software machines and assume that machine is down then you know your browser will not get any response and you know uh, your website will be uh, down to your customers so you don't want to you don't want such kind of scenarios to happen right so this is you know, i'm explaining only few things so the first thing is what if the server goes down and second thing what if the software crashes right the front end assume it crashed inside this machine then in that case also the same problem can happen the shopping cart software can crash right a software crash inside your laptops also the google chrome or microsoft ads browser when you open them and when you run multiple applications in your windows pc you will notice that it is getting struck so the problem is that you know due to cpu capacity memory capacity or maybe due to some bug inside the software it can be anything the software crash and that is also a problem that can occur inside a production infrastructure but your customer should not be affected you should not throw an error to the customer browser that is that would affect your reputation but you should expect that any software can crash you know you must expect that because it will happen all right so the next thing sorry the next thing what other things can happen so let's say you are getting a huge traffic from your customers one day you are running some campaign on your website you put some advertisement and you are expecting one you know one huge traffic on one particular day think about the flipkart big billion day or amazon prime day so in such days probably you know in normal cases you will be getting some 10000 customer every day and on that particular day it could be 1 lakh simultaneous users may be accessing the website it should not still fail but the problem is that you will not maintain you know assume you need a total sum you know uh, 1000 cpus and uh, 3000 gb of ram assume you already have that settings with you but on that particular big billion day you need 10 times the capacity you need high capacity you need more machines to be added into your infrastructure because the cpu and memory requirement can increase like anything so when such requirement increases or when you are getting a huge traffic or when your software is getting a extra load you need to satisfy that load by scaling your machines you need to add more machines so is this something a person can do you know check the traffic in real time then add the machines it's not easy right so that is also a problem that to take care even though the traffic is high your software or your production infrastructure should still be able to manage that traffic that is another uh, challenge in production environments and what are the other challenges then an individual software should also do such kind of scaling right assume you have the total cpu capacity but this machine has more capacity than this machine 
and lots of CPU and memory are free on this particular machine. And then you have a software running on this particular machine and it needs to scale. And that particular software is getting lots of requests and it probably want to scale up, want to handle more traffic than probably you want uh, a software instance will be running on this machine and a duplicate software instance will be running on other three or four machines as well so that it can manage the load properly and all the machines cpu and memory has to be used efficiently you should not waste it and you should not uh, you know uh, even uh, should be out of resources either so it should be in a balanced way whenever you need cpu and memory you must be using these machines whenever you don't need them you must not be using those machines so it should be in a balanced way don't waste it and at the same time make sure that you have enough uh, that is the generic rule about using the machine cpu and memory right so these are the challenges that you face in a production environment so if you maintain more machines it would cost you more also right i mean uh, buying 100 machines and buying 1000 machines 1000 machines is 10 times costlier than 10 machine uh, 100 machines so uh, that gap is there so there are many things that you need to take care all right so these are some challenges that we face in a production environment so any questions on this you know any any general questions on uh, production environment that you want to discuss the challenges that can happen in a uh, basil one more question i have yes hello uh, so in the cloud i think this scenario happens when the system is not in the cloud but in the cloud does this scenario will also be there because in that Definitely. the cost we can minimize it right uh, we can do it we can do it but all these scenarios are applicable in cloud also your ec2 machine is nothing but a virtual machine or a, uh, you can call it an electronic device it can fail the software that you run inside your ec2 machine can fail also and uh, you want to scale your machines you want to add more machines so whatever scenario uh, what i have been discussing in cloud it is easier to handle in on-premise it is not so easy that difference is there but all these problems are generic the problem occur in cloud as well as on-premise okay thank you uh, Basil, like uh, uh, for example with the help of kubernetes now they are handling all these issues whatever we discuss right but before yeah. kubernetes how they used to do handle these issues in the production environment it was difficult but there was different different tools available you know ansible for managing the configuration inside every machine people used to use ansible or chef different different tools that uh, they used uh, some kind of a monitoring system to that can automatically restart the services if they fail and there was is it manual there is it tools. manual intervention or it does not have to be manual but even if it is automated it is very complex without kubernetes uh, you know you can still automate all these things there are many things that you can automate but it is it's very very difficult okay uh Basil? yes sir uh, this setup comes uh, like we can say it's uh, ias means infrastructure as a service or uh, software as a service we will uh, come to that kubernetes is a platform as a service okay we don't really so, bother about uh, it yeah 
So if we want to uh, increase the memory size uh, and the servers, so auto scaling auto scaling will happen, right? Right, right. And how to like uh, if we are not required that loss of memory? We will uh, just keep fo your focus on uh, you know. Uh, do you have any uh, doubt about what we discussed so far? Let us keep the focus there. We will talk about Kubernetes in a bit. My question is that if we want to like uh, we don't need so many machines, so an auto scaling has been done. So how we come back to the previous position? Yeah, uh, we will be discussing that, Sanjay. Oh, right. so that is something we are going to discuss. Basil, can we uh, keep submissions in a one cloud? That means submissions in AWS and submissions in Google Cloud. Is it possible? Uh, put the questions in the chat. You know, let's let's keep our scenario uh, about uh, this production issues. Any other questions? Okay. We put them in the chat. We will discuss at the end. Okay, guys. So uh, you know, let us let us continue. <laughs> All right, so we will talk about how Kubernetes can solve all this problem. What is Kubernetes? First of all, uh, what is a Kubernetes? So uh, before I talk about what is Kubernetes, okay. Kubernetes is a software. It is a software. It is a free software, open source. Anyone in the world can use it. It is free. We can install it anywhere. So Kubernetes can using this software, you can create one cluster. You can create one cluster using Kubernetes. This is nothing but a number of Docker host working together. And then assume this is what you have done. So you know, let us before getting into Kubernetes, let us talk about our Docker images that you developed, right? Some of the Docker image you will develop in your company. Some of the Docker image, uh, you know, you will get from hub.docker.com, the public Docker registry. So like that, assume your company had developed a number of Docker images. One Docker image for the shopping cart, another Docker image for the prime customer. So like that, your company have. A number of docker images that you have developed that is what you will do your company will do you know if you have a mysql database you will you will get that mysql image from hub.docker.com but if you have a shopping cart software then you have developed it yourself in your company then the prime customer software assume you are using vectors as your website front end in that case you can get it from hub.docker.com so uh, you know there would be a number of image that you develop yourself and there would be a number of image that you would can you mute uh, robin can you mute there would be a number of uh, you know different different software uh, docker images right uh, all these microservices that i previously talked about Assume your company has developed Docker images. This is a uh, shop uh, Google Pay so payment component. This is the order management component. This is the product catalog component. This is the front end. So like that, there are different different software that your company is developing, and you you already converted all of them into Docker images. So when you are using docker how do you run your software ask docker forget about kubernetes all right don't worry about kubernetes we will come to that later assume if you don't have kubernetes how you are going to run all these softwares inside inside your production infrastructure so you will install docker in each and every machine right then after that you will create containers inside any of these machines maybe you will create a container here here inside this machine 
So these machines will run the product catalog service inside a container. Similarly, uh, assume inside this machine you want to run the Google Pay component, you would create a container inside this particular machine. So assume this is how it works. So this way, you, you have to create one or multiple containers from these images, you would create them inside, inside those machines and assume Docker is installed in each and every machines of your infrastructure. Assume there are 100 machines or 500 machines in your infrastructure. You will do this in each and every 500 machines. It's not very easy, right? Uh, you know, uh, using the Docker run command, if you want to create all these containers, it's going to be a very complex and boring process. So you definitely don't want to do it yourself. You must have your Docker images, but you do not want to run the containers yourself. You want the containers to be automatically created inside these machines, maybe distributed across these machines. So assume they all are Docker host. Then you can create containers in any of these machines, right? No problem, they are all Docker, they are all installed with Docker. You can create containers anywhere inside this machine. And sometimes your company will make changes in the images, right? Your company develop the software. They make some change in the front end. They make some change in the GPA software. You know, some new version of the image has come. Then the WordPress currently it is 5.0, assume. It released 6.0 you want to update your website to the latest version of WordPress the MySQL you know you are using 5.7 you want to upgrade to MySQL 8 so you want to use a different image so the software will keep changing right whether it is a software from hubdo.com or whether it is your company software it will keep changing that's what you do that's what your company will do your company keep developing or they keep changing the software so you will get the new version of the docker images and then you want the containers to be created inside inside the machine from the latest images you want to do that so this is a continuous process and if you have to do all this manually it is not very easy you know from the new images you want to create the new containers then you must create kill the old container create the new ones and when you kill the old container you should make sure that your customers are not affected right customers should not get affected uh, customers should be uh, able to connect either to the old container or to the node container not both container can go down at the same time so there are certain things that needs to be taken care of. and also any of this container can fail assume you created a container inside this machine. Now different different containers are created across different different machines. And what happens if the container fails? Somebody will automatically restart the container? No, they will they will maintain in the fail state. They will not run, and it is a problem. And again. If you want more machines to be added in your infrastructure, the same problem can occur. You want to manually add the machine and install Docker in it and then start deploying containers in it. So we are going to get rid of all these problems by using Kubernetes. So Kubernetes, I will now explain what is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a software, an open source software that anyone in the world can use and contribute to. This software can create one cluster and then it can manage this cluster. What is mean by a cluster? A number of machine, number of Docker host working as a single cluster. That's what I mean by 
a Kubernetes cluster. And after creating this cluster, your Kubernetes can start managing this cluster, right? What Kubernetes can do is Kubernetes can take the images based on the instruction that it received and then automatically create the containers inside these machines. So basically, you will give some instructions to Kubernetes. You will tell Kubernetes, this is the desired state. You will give the desired state of your production infrastructure to Kubernetes. You will tell Kubernetes that I have this many software frontend should run in three surveys. My SQL container should run in 10 surveys. Google Pay component will run in one server. So that means three container has to be created for the frontend software. Uh, for the MySQL, 10 containers has to be created. For GPay, one container need to be created. And you know they will be spread across uh, different different machines inside your cluster. Then you you know you keep updating this vectors. I want to run on you know a five a five containers. I want to run. So for each services you would mention how you want your production infrastructure to look like how many containers to be running for each services and should they be you know uh, automatically restarted if they go down so you can mention restart them automatically if any of the container fails restart them automatically then you can also write the instructions such as scale automatically that means that means if uh, if the load is high on a given container add more containers and handle the load then you can write the instructions such as um you know uh, replicas maintain the replicas so what that means is one container fail it will create a new container one container has a technical problem it will restart container so at any time it will make sure that for front end there are three containers one container fail then a new container get created by kubernetes kubernetes now all these images such as front end order vectors you know the different different images of your company you would give that image details to kubernetes kubernetes can create containers anytime then so basically you will give all these images to kubernetes and then give kubernetes some instructions how you want your infrastructure to look like and how the incoming traffic will come and you know automatically create more machines in the cloud uh, cloud auto scale that means whenever you want more machines in your cloud provider you know uh, the number of machines are not sufficient you need more machines so you would mention that then you can mention, you know, if you want to uh, put the front end container in this machine, assume this machine is in Mumbai, you want the front end to be running in Mumbai and the back end can run in Bangalore. So like that, you can actually specify which container will go into which machine. That is also you can specify affinity settings. So you just give these instructions to Kubernetes in a YAML file format. Kubernetes will read these instructions from you and then it will manage your entire production infrastructure automatically. You don't really have to worry about managing them yourself. Kubernetes found that three replicas, three container has to run for the front end. It will take the front end image and it will run three containers, maybe here, here and here. It found that MySQL should run in as 10 containers. It will take this image and it will create 10 containers across all the Docker host. We call this a cluster. Across the cluster, it would create 10 containers. You mentioned that Google Pay will run on one, uh, one machine. So it will take the Google Pay image and it would create a container in some machine. And Kubernetes also know the status of all these machines which machines have enough space which machines is full which machines cannot take any more containers if kubernetes keep that information 
and you know Kubernetes will act accordingly. Whichever machine that has enough CPU and memory, in those machines, you will create the containers. You can also mention, I want my vector software or my front-end software need a minimum of 200 MB of RAM. So you can make this request to Kubernetes, then Kubernetes will allocate, you know, assume the uh, container is getting created inside this machine, Kubernetes will allocate 200 MB, minimum 200 MB to that machine and maximum limit you can specify. So there are many instructions, lots of instruction you can write inside Kubernetes and then you can forget about your production infrastructure. You can absolutely forget about your production infrastructure. You had given instruction to Kubernetes. Now it is Kubernetes responsibility to maintain and manage your infrastructure. Any container shutdown, it would create a new one. Any container failed, it will try to restart it. Any, you know, uh, then uh, all these things will happen automatically as per the instructions you had given to Kubernetes. So you will be writing these instructions in in a formatted file, which we call the YAML files, which is something like JSON or XML. You you put the data in in one file. You don't have to be a programming expert. These are you know a, a basic syntaxes there for these files where you write the instructions which i am going to show you so with that syntax you are going to write the yaml files and uh, kubernetes will read this yaml file and then kubernetes will uh, understand what is the desired state what is the desired state of your production infrastructure and then these states will be applied to all the machines in your production infrastructure that is what kubernetes will do it will replace your engineer right and it will start handling your production infrastructure all by itself so that is what kubernetes is and that is why kubernetes is important when you have a dockerized environment assume right your company must be using docker Otherwise, you know, there is no point you can use Kubernetes for. Your company must be using Docker. You must develop all the Docker images yourself. The front end image, the order image, you know, assume your company had already developed all these Docker images. Then Kubernetes can take those images and deploy the containers in a Kubernetes cluster. Is it clear? Uh, let us not go into technical yet, but you know, if you have any doubts on, uh, if you have any doubts on uh, whatever we discussed so far, and uh, not much technical uh, questions, but uh, any other questions, whatever we discussed uh, so far, any doubts? Yeah, Vesel, I have a question. Uh, you are talking about the memory size, right? We are telling it um, depends on the number of users increasing, the memory will be increased, right? So how right. it is? We are going to start teach. If you, right now I have 200 MB, maybe later some due to cust some uh, customer is increasing. Is automatically the memory will be in? Okay, you are going for that uh, condition, right? We are using. Uh, that is not an extra settings. Uh, Kubernetes does that automatically. It's a default setting. So 200 MB, you can specify, uh, you know, uh, you are asking Kubernetes to allocate this much memory to me because you know that this particular software, even without traffic, it will consume 200 MB. You know that this software is, you know, with it need memory. So you will tell Kubernetes that I need this much memory minimum. Does not mean a maxim maximum limit. If you want, you can set, but it is optional. Unless you set any maximum limit, Kubernetes will automatically uh, scale memory for your containers. Okay, that's got it. Thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Sonia. Uh, so, what I understand is uh, through this YAML file, correct? <coughs> we can uh, uh, put or uh, like uh, configure all the requirement which we needed. Uh, like uh, regarding this uh, so but like uh, automatically or by default uh, by default kubernetes also do something or uh, like uh, if we if we want to uh, like uh, through our product 
uh, we need some uh, we need to configure some requirements so that we need to put through this yaml file correct what i understand is and then automatically it will uh, fulfill our requirement as per so trigger section or any other configuration will be done by you by writing okay. the yaml Okay. So, okay. so configuration has to be done by the YAML file. Kubernetes is more like a worker. It will worker, be the job for you. Execute. Okay. Basil can change the configurations later, like while the containers are increasing, like uh, images are increasing. Like, um, the starting it is uh, definitely like yeah so uh, if if you are uh, if you have more software uh, you know in your uh, company uh, a new software uh, your company started to develop uh, another software called paytm to manage the paytm payments they created another software called paytm and assume they already developed the paytm image so yes you will write the instructions again you will write more instructions on how to handle the Paytm container. So it's all about configurations. So you uh, you write something and uh, you might modify it based on the requirement that is coming. And today probably you didn't really identify that your shopping cart needs 200 MB minimum. And you realize that after running it for one month, you you started getting some complaints and then then you realize that you know it is better to allocate minimum 200 MB to shopping cart and then you will do that so this is more like a continuous uh, process you keep updating uh, these yaml file or instructions kubernetes will take the latest instructions and apply them into your machines so uh, co configuration can be applied it can be changed whenever you want to kubernetes will always take the desired state from whatever yaml file that you give it to all right so so that is uh, pretty much about you uh, know uh, kubernetes so we will we are going what we are going to do is we are going to create a cluster kubernetes cluster which is nothing but a number of docker host machines working together in our case uh, in the aws account i'm going to create a couple of docker host machines a couple of machines then i'm going to install docker in it then i'm going to add them inside a kubernetes cluster so we will see that uh, after a short break take a short break of five minutes and we will continue after five minutes okay
Okay, guys, so let us continue. Uh, uh, all of you, please keep yourself on mute when you are not speaking. I think some noise is coming in the background. All right. Give me one second. So let us start. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Kubernetes cluster. And Kubernetes cluster can be created. Okay, one second. Yeah. 
so we are going to create a kubernetes cluster and a kubernetes cluster can be created either in the cloud or you can install and configure it yourself on your premises there are two ways we can create a kubernetes cluster so we will be learning next two weeks we will not be talking much about the cloud this uh, server auto scaling is a cloud feature actually that won't come in on premise so there are you know uh, when it, when you use the cloud you will get some additional benefits but uh, even if you are using on premise cluster still you will get a huge number of benefits so we will be focusing for next two weeks we will be talking about uh, on premise cluster and for an on premise cl cluster there are two components if you want to set up kubernetes cluster first of all you know you need a number of machines which will be a member of the cluster so this can be nothing but your aws machines right different different machines can be there inside your kubernetes infrastructure and this can be your aws machine i will create you know a couple of machines in my aws i will install docker in all the machines and then i will configure those machines as a as a member of kubernetes cluster and then you know i can start scheduling my containers into those machines so assume i have containers i have docker images and uh, you know those uh, vector uh, we will be taking the vectors and mysql images right not come lots of images but uh, you know assume you have the vectors image mysql image different different software in your company put into docker images and then you want to create containers inside this docker host and in order to do that in order to do such kind of operation you need other set of machine to control this cluster right i mean you give a desired state you specify the desired state as yaml file right assume this is the desired state that you had given to the kubernetes cluster in terms of yaml file and what kubernetes how to do is it will read this yaml file understand how many containers to be created in each and every machine how much memory and cpu every container need and then it will create start creating the containers in these machines there may be multiple containers that get created inside these machines so uh, do whatever right uh, kubernetes will do whatever to make sure that the desired state is maintained inside this cluster and to do such kind of management you need a number of machines extra so assume you know there are a couple of machines that will that will do this kind of management it will read the desired state store the desired state then you know as per the desired state it will it will update the machines in your cluster so these machines are called the management nodes they they are basically the decision makers i mean they will decide okay for this particular shopping cart how many container to be created and which machines the container has to be created which machine has cpu and memory free so these machines you can call them worker machines all these machines you call them workers okay maybe i will draw it in somewhere else these are the worker machines and that is where the containers will run and software will get deployed and these machines are only for the decision making purpose it will it will read your yaml file it will understand what needs to be done on these machines how to run containers on these workers which container will go into which machine which machine has cpu and memory free so you know uh, all those things are done by this management nodes so these are called management nodes or managers
so for any kubernetes it will contain managers it will also contain work case work case is where you deploy your containers right basically this is where the containers will run managers are only for you know managing the cluster they make the decision they they make the changes you know they, they will make sure that the decide state is applied to the worker nodes that is their primary responsibility that's what they will do they will keep making sure that the decide state is applied to the worker machines so generally you know there will be multiple manager and multiple worker nodes and in my case what i am going to do is i'm going to create one one manager and two worker you know to save the resources it is a good idea that you have more managers and more workers but you know three machine is a good number to start with so uh, i will create three machines uh, three aws machines and uh, all the three AWS machines, I will install Docker in it because uh, we are going to create Docker containers at the end. That's what Kubernetes will do. Kubernetes will take the Docker images and create Docker containers in these machines. Uh, the manager also need Docker. So we are going to install Docker in all the three machines. Then we will install some Kubernetes components in all the three machines to form the cluster, you know, some software need to be installed on these machines then only they will become the work case some software need to be installed on this machine then only it will become the manager then you know at the end uh, so you, you have to do a number of installation before you form the final cluster so let us do that i'm going to create a cluster my plan is i will create three machines three aws machines two of them i will set it up as a worker one machine i will configure as the manager later we will give the docker image information and decide state information to uh, the manager and it will apply the settings to the worker nodes so uh, that will come later so first of all let us do this let us go ahead and create a cluster uh, to do that you need a total three machines one to work as the manager and other two to work as the worker not remember i'm simply using aws only to create the machines it does not mean that i'm creating a cloud kubernetes cluster no make a note aws provide kubernetes service we are not using the kubernetes service we are setting up the cluster ourselves we are manually creating three machines in aws and so in our case it is just that the machines are in AWS, but the cluster is not an AWS cluster. Cluster is something we will set up ourselves after we created these machines. So this is a on-premise cluster that uh, we are going to set up. Assume you have three machines with you. How you will set up a cluster in a Kubernetes cluster using those three machines on your on-premises? That is what we are going to discuss. I needed three machines, so I'm using AWS to create them. That's all. Right. Uh, then there is another concept called cloud cluster. I'm not creating that. Just for your information, don't get confused. We are learning on premise clusters. So I will create three machines. I need three machines to build my own cluster. That's why I'll create three machines. And I believe one machine. okay uh, so let me okay let me create total three machines right so i will create one manager machine first because i need more cpu and memory so let me create one machine separately which is uh, t2 small because t2 micro would be too slow to work as a manager that's why but remember if you choose t2 small it will cost you it is chargeable 
and it's very cheap but it's chargeable so make sure that you stop the machine when you don't use them if it is one hour or two hour it's okay you can run them but you know don't run it for 24 hours it would cost you so stop them when you don't use them if you are choosing t2 small so i'm just creating a t2 small machine this machine will be the manager then i will create two other machines and my plan is to set them up as worker nodes so this machine let me name it manager or something and now i'm going to create two more machines two t2 micro machines oh, wait I mean, you can create two machines at one shot. So I just I'm doing that. For worker node, a T2 micro is good enough. I, I want to create two machines. So all right. So what we did is we created a total three machines in my AWS account. They are normal Linux machines, right? You haven't done anything. My plan is one machine I will use as the manager one machine i will use as worker one and worker two so like that you can actually have a number of workers uh, in a kubernetes cluster so let me log into all the three machines and remember docker must be installed right all these machines are going to be docker host they are going to run containers so docker must be installed it is on the worker machines we will be running our own containers but a manager machine should also run some container for management purpose that is why all uh, machines must be installed with docker i'm going to do that so i'm going to log into each and every machines this is the manager machine Now let me go to the worker one machine. Let me log into the worker one machine. This is the worker one machine. And similarly, let me log into worker two machine, total three machines. I'm going to log in. So I am logged into all the three machines. And now it is time to install Docker in all the three machines. And that is exactly what I am going to do. So what you will do, you will first you will search in Google, right? How to install Docker, right? Docker install Ubuntu. Then you will go to the Docker website and you will follow the documentation to install Docker, right? You already know how to install Docker, right? We had done that before. I'm doing it again on all the three machines. All three machines. Then, you know, some free, free software. This is not Docker, but some free Rika sites. And once that is done, you know, now you add the official Docker key. Just uh, copy paste the commands from the Docker documentation. Now you have to add the repository. In all the three machines. And let us go ahead and install Docker in all the three machines.
basil yeah uh, i have a doubt here like uh, uh, we are installing uh, docker using sudo right everywhere but uh, yeah. uh, well we are uh, running the uh, commands of docker uh, if uh, without using sudo we can do that yeah when you are root and uh, sudo is not mandatory correct no need to use sudo if you are working as root user so right now i am working as root user sudo was actually not necessary if you are working as ubuntu sudo is necessary okay all right okay so uh, i installed docker so what i did is i created three docker host that's what i did i created three docker host machines i created three machines in my aws account and then i had installed docker in all the three machines this is what i did and now it is time to install kubernetes configure this machine as the manager configure the other two machines as the worker to do that you know first you will install a number of software i will tell you what are the list of software to be installed one software is kubi admin kubi admin is a software that will create a kubernetes cluster that can create a kubernetes cluster it can combine all the machines and create a kubernetes cluster so this kubernetes software has to be installed in every machines all the three machines then there is another software called kubelet kubelet is a software which will run in the worker machines but you know it can be installed in all the three machines no problem and kubelet running on this worker machines will keep telling the manager about their information about their status currently i am running two containers i have total of 8 cpus and 16 gb ram and out of that you know 6 cpu is in use 2 cpu is free and then out of 16 gb ram 10 uh, gb ram is in use 6 gb ram is free so the software kubelet that will run inside the worker nodes will keep sending their updates to the manager continuously that is how the manager node know what is going on in the worker node how many containers are running in each worker node did any containers get stopped did any new container got created so it will keep updating that can happen right container can get deleted or get created uh, automatically so whenever that happens then manager want to know so kubelet is a software which will run in every worker nodes and it will collect the data from the worker and send the data to the master and then master will use that data to make the decisions then it understand okay this machine has 2 cpu free and a 6 gb memory free so it can be scheduled with one container that has minimum requirements so kubernetes can get this information from kubelet which is running inside the worker nodes so that is what kubelet software means and then there is one more thing kubi ctl kubi ctl is a software which you can use right let's say you want to interact with kubernetes you want to apply the instructions right i talked about those yaml files so assume you wrote all the yaml files and now you want to tell the manager that this is my current state right you want to execute a command you can execute a kubi ctl command telling the kubernetes manager that this is what i want to do this is my yaml file please take this yaml file and apply the settings or you know it's not only that a kubis ctl can be used for any operation you want to perform in the kubernetes cluster you want to see how many containers are there total how many uh, machines are there total which one is the manager which one is the worker and any container is in fail status any container is keep getting restarted i want to see the logs coming from the containers so any kind of operations inside kubernetes you want to do 
you can do it using the kubectl command kubectl will basically communicate continuously communicate with the with the master machine to get this information to apply some information or to get some information you can use the kubectl command so these are the three software which must be installed in all the three machines kubectl does not need to be installed in all the three machines kubectl is installed on on your laptop or on on you know in our case we will install kubectl on the manager node kubectl will talk to the manager so you can talk to the manager remotely you know assume you have your laptop and from the laptop you want to run the kubectl kubectl can be installed on your laptop also kubectl will continuously talk to the manager that is what kubectl will do so in our case we will install kubectl within the manager node itself uh, but it can be installed outside as well right so don't worry much so i'm going to install all the three software in all the three machine uh, kubectl i have to install only here no need to install here other two software should be installed in all the machines so let us go ahead and do that i'm going to search in google install kobe admin in ubuntu yeah so go to the kubernetes website go to the kubernetes website and it will have the instructions to install kubeadmin in ubuntu so installing kubeadmin kubelet and kubectl these are the instructions so uh, you know let us follow the debian based distribution so this is what we do i am going to install in all the three machines okay all the commands i am running in all the three machines it's okay i mean uh, kubectl does not need to be installed in everywhere but it's okay oops i got disconnected one second okay i will log in again to all the three machines because i got disconnected Yeah, sorry so i am logged into all the three machines and now i am going to install uh kubi admin kubi ctl and kubilet in all the three machines follow the steps run all the commands one by one adding the signature adding the repository which contains the kubernetes kubeadmin kubectl and kubelet and now installing them one by one first apt get then apt get install okay uh, apt get mark is nothing but you know it is it is for preventing the accidental updates to the software so you are you install some version of kubelet kubeadmin and kubectl you want to maintain that version you can you know execute this command it's an optional command apt get mark 
All right, so what you did is you installed Kubernetes in all the three machines. So which one is the manager? You yeah, haven't shown the manager yet, right? Uh, we install kubectl on workers also, right? We now we install kubectl on workers also, even though it was not necessary. You know, I just did that. Okay. All right. So right now, what is the situation? You know, all the three software got installed in all the three machines. So currently, you know, all the three machines are same. You know, they they got installed with Docker. They got installed with the software. So we haven't decided the manager yet. That's exactly what. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. So as you said, like uh, to install this kubectl uh, command in a worker is not mandatory, correct? But you installed. So. Is there any situation or uh, like a practical uh, environment where we'll face like uh, where these two software will no. come in picture? No. no. Just like uh, okay. Just uh, no. Just forget that I installed kubectl in work case. We are never going to use it. Just you know, okay. I don't. I don't want to. I wanted it to be faster. I wanted to copy paste. That's all. Mm -hmm. So kubectl okay. is not needed in these machines. All right, uh, so right, so uh, right now we have three machines, and all the three machines are installed with all the softwares. But uh, you know, we haven't decided the master yet. So I want this machine to become the master. So to create the master, we haven't created the cluster either. And now right now, all the three machines are three independent machines. They are installed with some software, but we have not configured them or we have not created the cluster yet. And that is exactly what I am going to do. I'm going to create a cluster. And the cluster creation will take place from one machine. That machine will automatically become the manager. And once the cluster got created, the other two machines will join the cluster. This is the approach we are going to follow. So uh, there is a command you can execute kubadmin init kubadmin init is the command you can execute inside this machine then it will create a cluster and that machine become the manager of the cluster automatically so I'm going to do that one second um... Yeah, I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do is I go to the first machine. This is the machine. I will mark it as red color or something or give it some title. This is the master machine or manager machine i hope you all can see the title here manager yes yeah, so uh, i'm going to uh, run the command kubadmin in it and i am expecting some error here this is you know i was actually expecting this error uh, it is telling me that uh, the recommended driver is system d please follow the instructor's warning so the only error I have is, you know, the number of CPU. I don't have enough CPU. So I want to ignore this error. I know that I don't have enough CPU. The recommended number of CPU is two, but a T2 small machine in AWS get only one CPU. That is why this error is coming. I don't have enough CPU, but I want to ignore this error and move on. You can do this. Um, ignore pre-flight array is equal to then you can specify the error num cpu is the error so you know this this put thing if you put along then uh, you know it will ignore that error and it will continue so right now what happens is what this particular command does is 
it will create a cluster it will install some software inside the manager some software for the management purpose some software that can check the workcase some software that can schedule new containers to the workcase some software that can check the current status of the worker how much cpu is free how much memory is free you know different different software should be installed on this machine for the cluster management purpose and kubadmin init command will do that it will set up this master machine from scratch that's what happening now the kubernetes master machine is now getting installed from scratch Waiting for Kubernetes to boot up and control plane. Okay. We take up to four minutes. Let's wait. Okay, yeah, we can we can take the questions. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, it's done. So uh, the cluster is created. Now we created a Kubernetes cluster. And currently there's only one machine in the cluster, the manager node. The worker nodes are independent AWS machine. So you have to add those machines if you want those machines to join the cluster, right? Right now they are not a member of the cluster. There's only one machine who is the member of the cluster, the manager node the node where you executed this command right okay great actually there is one more thing that you need to do all right it's already nine o'clock so uh, we will we will continue tomorrow uh, now you know this is the command the worker node need to execute if they want to join the cluster so I will run this command on the worker node tomorrow. And before running that command, you know, there are certain other things needs to be done. So we will discuss all that tomorrow. So any questions? Battery? Yeah. In, in real time, do we install QCP uh, and the worker side? uh we will we will talk about that in the coming classes yeah it is kubectl kubectl is the command you always use to connect to the cluster and make modification and today there are some other tools also available so in real time it can be kubectl kubectl is a very powerful utility or it can be a gui tool also there are many graphical tools also available today to manage your cluster so yeah. okay. Basil, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, there is a yml file in uh, kubernetes so is that similar with uh, github yml file or any kind of differences same scenario, same syntax. Same yeah, same syntax. Okay. So YAML file is used in many places. It is used in Git. I don't know if it is Git. More used. Ansible uses YAML files. Then uh, you know a different different. It is now a standard uh, in many many uh, softwares and tools. You can pass the data in a YAML file. Kubernetes uses YAML. Okay. Is that possible us to uh, view any kind of uh, logs in Kubernetes? I mean, uh, uh, we are, we we are doing log. container logs are visible. Uh, you can see the logs, container logs, using kubectl command itself. Mm-hmm.
बसल इन डॉकर्स हाउ विल बी लॉक्स uh how we will log how we will uh, see the logs it logs. is possible you can see uh, the question is uh, how do you see the container logs right you have your yes. software running in the container and you want to see the logs it is possible yes. we will uh, discuss that okay so right now, it's possible so when you run the uh, docker run command also it was visible right any executor to docker run command without minus b yes it was actually visible on the console so yeah we will discuss more on that okay um basil you told me you told yesterday that you want to send an extra video to create a image right i didn't receive this one no not yet uh, i will send it later by end of the week okay so it's not for uh, yeah. uh basil can you repeat uh, uh, what we are going to what commands we are installing in manager and what kernel uh, just the name uh, kubatmin is installed everywhere kubelet is installed okay. everywhere obctl okay. is installed on the manager Kubernetes CTL is only installed in a manager. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Basil, I'm coming. My question again. Like uh, in Docker, we are setting up with a sudo command, right? Like I'm saying that on that particular mission only, we're creating one user, like Tom user. There we, there how we use uh, Docker commands with sudo or without? uh so sudo uh, i will tell you what is sudo it is in a root user i know that but uh, i i need an answer like uh, without sudo also we can do or not like that no apt get command needs sudo permission okay you cannot run apt get without sudo not installation like docker commands only docker yes that is possible you can How? add user to docker uh, and then do it so there's a command called user mod minus g eight, minus capital eight, g hyphen ag yeah okay you can add the user to docker and then uh, the normal user can also run docker without sudo okay 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 thank you all right uh, so anybody else any questions uh, i am asking for this, this question for my knowledge can we install uh, some missions uh, that means if we are installing some 10 missions at the time of uh, installing the missions that means i am launching the missions can we uh, uh, launch the missions with uh, already installing with some softwares before installing For launch, you mean in AWS machine you are talking about? Yeah, machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everyone else, this is not a doctor question, but I am still answering him. So don't get confused. So in AWS, you can actually take a machine image. AWS allows you to take the image of one of your existing machines. From that image, you can create a new AWS machine. That is possible. There is something called AMI. Amazon AMIs. So uh, you, if you have a running AWS instance, you can just you know right click on the machine and create an AMI, and from that AMI you can create a new machine. So new machine will contain uh, whatever the old machine had. Over here. Okay. And once you created the image, they are available under images section, and you can right click on the image and you can create a new machine. New machine will contain whatever you had in the old machine. Like only option is that ex what existing machines have that only we can take. Correct. <laughs> okay.
Basil, yes, can sir. we also? Yes, Rahul. Uh, can we also install the virtual machines by uh, at the time of running the some commands? That means uh, uh, running the installing the. I want to install the WordPress in my uh, all virtual ten machines. Is that possible while uh, uh, deploying the mission? Why? Because we have to in, go and install the login to every mission, and we have to install right all the ten minutes. Uh, instead of doing that. This is the procedure. So you will take a uh, first of all, you will create one machine, install Apache, MySQL, or whatever you need to install, set up WordPress, take the an image, and then from that image you can create any number of machine. All machine will look, uh, all machine will run WordPress. Thank you. Yeah, same procedure. So basically. Uh, for yes. this AMI, uh, AMI, so uh, if I take one machine's AMI, AMI image, so I'll deploy to uh, n number of uh, machines. So it will contain all the data or uh, only the softwares? It will contain all the data. And even software is also data, right? It will do a complete clone on the entire machine. That is what an image means. So uh, software okay. means let's say you install Firefox, right? Or Putty. Think about Putty that you installed. It is just an EXE file, and that is a software. So uh, even let's say you are installing a complex software in the program file. So you have some binaries located in the program files folder. You have some shortcut located in the stock. They are all nothing but actually data. I mean, they are nothing but files and folders. At the end, uh, your entire laptop is you know, a list of files and folders. Some of them are executable, some of them are not, some of them are configuration, some of them are different types of files. At the end, it's all. So image is nothing but it would do a complete cloning of your entire hard disk you know, and their machine along with the machine settings, AWS machine settings, and then uh, you can use that image to create a new machine. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Basil, like uh, you have uh, created one manager and two worker nodes, right? So how we can move the account to create uh, this this nodes? Look, so like we can create a uh, two manager and uh, four worker nodes like that, right? So how we will know the I mean the account to set up these machines? Uh, we will talk about it. So when you are setting up on-premise cluster, it is all manual. You have to do the same procedure manually. But in cloud, it is an exception. It happens automatically. So yeah. So uh, like, instead of one and two, it can be two and four. No problem. Okay. Like based upon our scenario, we'll take. Um, those machines right correct correct it's based on the scenario if you are not running a very complex software and, and if your load is very minimal then you don't need a multiple manager and you don't need too many worker nodes so it completely depends on your needs okay And also, like we have the process to create a containers and doing setup and everything, right? So, uh, then why we need of uh, Kubernetes? It's only for scaling up the containers, or uh, we can do. So how you will create uh, the containers in Docker? Like uh, by I mean running the command like Docker run and uh, yeah the image. So, yeah, so. That is not very practical, right? So, so like in the Kubernetes, uh, we also in the Kubernetes also we uh, I mean run the containers by doing the uh, commands only, right? No. Or do we have any specific? You prepare the YAML file. You prepare the desired state. When it comes to mm -hmm. Kubernetes, your responsibility is to prepare the. Decide state inside you know, by writing instructions in the YAML file. 
Kubernetes will take them and apply them. So you don't use commands to create containers or create services. Uh, you don't do that manually. So Basil, when we are doing on the premises, we don't need to configure uh, the desired state in YAML file. We will. It doesn't matter whether we are working on a cloud or premise. This is what you will do. You will prepare the desired state in YAML. You will apply it to your cluster. No, when we are doing in premises, uh, we are doing it manually. No. no. Even then, we have to uh, no. if it tell is that premises, desired state. If it is premises, then you get an additional responsibility for creating the cluster yourself that's all okay this only creating the cluster is uh, our job in premises exactly. extra job yeah. exactly. exactly okay so if it is cloud you know this machine is provided by the cloud so we don't even get a login to this machine okay. uh, cloud provider if it is aws or google cloud whoever it is they will run this machine and we don't even get login credential to this machine. They will just give you a cluster. So the, your only responsibility is to manage the YAML file and stuff. So in on-premise, you know, this is something you have to do yourself. Okay. Cluster creation is a step. Okay. So Basil, while uh, I am running the kubectl command, uh, after modifying the ML file, uh, it is getting executed. If I run the kubectl command after changing again the modifications in the ML file, I am getting one error. Uh, like uh, at the bottom, it is uh, getting like uh, uh, ML file is uh, updated. Like that, it is getting. When I go to the console and I again copy the ML file, and created the new uh, file in the in my machine and I, again executed means I'm it is getting executed when I try to run second time means it is not getting executed what are the modifications I done so which one we are talking about you are talking about Google Cloud or something or what? yeah Google Cloud Google Cloud uh, normal cluster got it uh, yeah, can we look at that at a later point of time you know, yeah sure, sure yeah I will pin in mail. Uh, I have one more doubt, Basil. Uh, in uh, starting, I ask for right. Can we yes. uh, create? A, uh, sorry, we, we will create one cluster. To that cluster, can we attach the instances uh, from uh, different different cloud uh, services? Yes. In so uh, on-premise cluster means it is independent of cloud. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, the machine we created in AWS, it could have been a Google Cloud machine, it could have been your laptop also, or it could have been a machine, server machine in a data center, bare metal server, anything. So all the three machine what we created, we created in AWS because for me that was the easiest way to do. Uh, we, we are, when we create a on-premise cluster, the machine doesn't matter where the machine is in. Okay like that uh, that setup would be uh, done in uh, managers or master uh, machine vessel like we are adding we are adding in a uh, different uh, uh, cloud instance right uh, in one cluster so we'll uh, the on premise cluster doesn't even know uh, which cloud provider the machines are on premise cluster means you have a number of independent machines each machine has an IP each machine yes. you know the only thing is that they must be able to communicate each other that's all you know if the machine have a IP they can communicate right doesn't matter which cloud provider uh, yes that I'm saying that we are uh, give give the permission to that machine in manager uh, machine itself right correct correct huh. yeah huh. what okay. we are going to do uh, for in our uh, setup it, it applies to any machine in the world Okay. Yeah. In the manager, they will get added. We hadn't done that today. We'll do it tomorrow. 
and the machines will get an order as a worker to the cluster that that we will do tomorrow so oh, so basically managers here acting like in a uh, like a repository right acting like a management server so it has a lot of software running in it that makes the machine capable to do all these things right listen to the kubectl command manage the worker machines create containers delete containers so okay. uh, it run uh, different different software a number of software actually uh, runs inside the manager node that makes okay. the manager node capable to do the complete cluster of management okay all right so uh, you know let us uh, let us find out for today tomorrow we will complete the cluster creation and we will start creating some deployment inside the cluster okay uh, yeah see you tomorrow thanks um, so basically this video will be uploaded right now right? Uh, yeah i need some time to convert the video okay. so, yeah it would uh, it won't take much time i'll upload it actually i have uh, some disconnection or other class it is some yeah, bad network some problem actually yeah yeah sure i will i'll upload it as much as possible okay thank you basin please upload the friday's video as well oh so, uh that uh, project overview right yes i don't record it it was not recorded okay uh, yeah uh, thank you all see you see you tomorrow thank you